Got him on 99. Dolander is to pitching as Zoolander is to modeling. Um, I, I'd like to be sitting 98 to 100. That's kind of what my goal in mind is. I mean, it's wicked. <laughs> What's the goal for 2023? Obviously won a national championship. Chase Dolander is a right-handed starting pitcher currently for the Tennessee Volunteers. Although come July after his junior year is over, he's likely to become the next Pittsburgh Pirate. We'll get into the details of why that is, but with Dolander jumping on everyone's radar after his performance this past year with Tennessee, how did he get to this point? Tyler Chase Dolander was born in Evans, Georgia, which is the same city in which he attended Greenbrier High School. In his senior year of high school, he was clocked throwing 93 miles an hour, but his fastball typically sat around 90. He had some solid velocity for a high school pitcher, and even though he had a .79 ERA his junior year, he would head into his senior season being ranked 500th overall as a high school prospect and the 227th ranked right-handed pitching prospect in the country. A majority of the 2020 season for high schoolers was canceled due to COVID, and Chase would go undrafted in the 2020 MLB draft. After all, this was a shortened draft due to COVID. This one was only five rounds compared to the typical 40 rounds. He would then enroll at Georgia Southern University for his freshman year in college. He said he fine-tuned his mechanics with his lower half, and in his freshman year, he was 6'3", 200 pounds, with his fastball sitting 93 to 95, but hitting 97 miles per hour at just 19 years old. And his first career college start would come against none other than the University of Tennessee. He would exit the game with the lead after going five and two thirds innings with eight strikeouts and just one walk. And although they didn't win the game, Chase caught the eye of the head coach for the volunteers. And he also got a glimpse of what it would be like to play baseball in the SEC. In his one year with Georgia Southern, he pitched 49 innings with a 4.04 ERA, 64 strikeouts and 28 walks. He definitely struggled a bit with the walks, but as he admitted, he wasn't challenging hitters as much as he should have with that fastball, which led to the uptick in walks. He did have a very good strikeout rate at 11.8 strikeouts per nine innings. So heading into 2022, Chase hit the transfer portal and the rest is history. In 2022, his sophomore year in college, he would end up pitching in 79 innings with an SEC best 2.39 ERA, 108 strikeouts to 13 walks, a nation leading 0.797 whip, a 12.3 strikeouts per nine, and an 8.31 strikeout to walk ratio. Got him on 99. Dolander is to pitching as Zoolander is to modeling. It seems that whatever control issues he had at Georgia Southern were wiped away in Tennessee, or more so, he just started challenging batters more than he had in the past. What is what is Frank Anderson unlocked in you? He he just kind of keeps it really simple, to be honest with you. He has his pitching plan, and I know there's a lot of pitching plans out there that it could be 14, 15 pages long, but his is two. Um, nice. ba basically, what it is is just throw strikes, and we'll kind of go from there. And if you if you don't, you probably won't pitch here. That's kind of what he says. Um, and that's a really fair point because in order to be successful, you got to throw strikes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he, he just keeps everything really simple. His pitching, his, his pitch calling, there it is. His pitch calling is very simple and very easy to follow for us, but it still kind of throws hitters off because, I mean, he will throw in things that you don't expect but we have complete trust in him and he has complete trust in us and it just kind of works. Frank Anderson must be doing something right because in 2022, Tennessee's pitching staff had the lowest ERA in all of college baseball at a 2.51 ERA. And they've had a great staff throughout the past few years, including flamethrower Ben Joyce, who was drafted by the Los Angeles Angels in the third round of the 2022 MLB draft. He threw the fastest pitch in college baseball history at 105.5 miles per hour. And my next player profile video will be about him, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. But now back to Dolander. With his performance in 2022, he was a first team All-American and became just the second player in program history to be named the SEC Pitcher of the Year. His current arsenal is a four seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. So far in his career, he's relied heavily on his fastball and slider, and he says his goal with a fastball is to sit 98 to 100, but he's mentioned that he'd like to fine tune his curveball and changeup to give him a true four pitch mix. What does this winner look like for Chase Dolander? Yeah, so I mean, I just kind of have this, have this idea in my mind that I just want to put on some weight and, you know, just kind of see where that takes me. 
Um, obviously, the goal is always to gain a little bit more velo if I can. Um, I, I'd like to be sitting 98 to 100. That's kind of what my goal in mind is. I mean, it's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people probably can't say the same thing, but you know, everybody has different goals and for their for their own bodies and stuff like that. But you know, I feel like I can do that, and you know, I, and to be honest with you, I will in my opinion, just because I know how hard I can work and now, and I know what it, what it can take and what it will take to be able to do that. Um, but other than that, kind of, kind of going off the of pitches, um, I really want to use my, um, curveball and my change up a lot more this season. Um, just kind of use those kind of, so I have a legitimate four pitch mix rather than just use my fastball slider most of the time. And so that's just kind of where we are right now. Just working on sharpening up the curveball and using change up more. His combination of high velocity, the fastball and slider combo, and a bit of his motion has gotten him comparisons to Jacob deGrom, but he doesn't let that get to his head. The comparisons are great, yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm my own person. I mean, I'm not, I've seen one comparison of Jacob deGrom. I'm not Jacob deGrom, I'm Chase Dolander. Like, that's just kind of how I keep my mind straight. Now, of course, headed into 2023, their goal is to win a national championship. But once that season is done, Dolander will be one of the top MLB prospects for the 2023 MLB draft. Number one and number two will fluctuate depending on which article you look at between him and outfielder Dylan Cruz from LSU. But now that the MLB draft order has been solidified, I think it's all but a lock that Chase Dolander will be selected 1-1 by the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates were in the playoffs every year from 2013 to 2015. However, since then have been a bottom dweller in the NL Central and have been in a consistent state of a rebuild. Over the past couple years, they've graduated some of their top prospects in shortstop O'Neill Cruz, third baseman Cabrian Hayes, pitcher Mitch Keller, and they currently have a top 10 farm system with likely some of those guys being called up to the show this year, including catcher Henry Davis, infielder Leover Piguero, infielder Nick Gonzalez, and outfielder Andy Rodriguez. The Pirates have been in the bottom five in team ERAs in three out of the past four years. And don't get me wrong, the problems with the Pirates go much deeper than just the pitching. Their team in 2020 and 2021 had the fewest runs scored in all of baseball. And in 2022, they had the fourth fewest amounts of runs scored. It's now come to light that their best hitter outfielder Brian Reynolds has requested a trade from the team, and the team has a very high asking price on him. Rumors are that they've been asking for MLB ready pitching and outfield help, but no matter if the Pirates end up trading Reynolds or keeping him for this year, typically in the draft, the fastest way to have an impact on your major league team is to draft college pitching that's ready to go. Chase Dolander is the type of talent to where we very well might see him pitching in the MLB in the same year that he's drafted. And for the Pirates fan base's sake, I hope they manage him correctly, as within the past six seasons, they've had guys in their system like Garrett Cole, Joe Musgrove, Tyler Glasnow, Charlie Morton, Jamison Tyone, Clay Holmes, Jose Quintana, Tyler Anderson, and Shane Boz, yet with all this pitching, they weren't able to get into a playoff spot before they traded these players. And back in 2019, Garrett Cole and Tyler Glasnow both faced each other in the ALDS Game 5, and in 2022, all of those names I mentioned before, aside from Shane Boz, which makes eight of them, pitched in the postseason for their respective teams. I'm excited to see how Chase does in 2023, so make sure to tune in for some University of Tennessee baseball. Thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe for more baseball content, and I'll put a link on the right side of the screen to my player profile series. Else? All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it. Stop it.